but yeah, it should be brushed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting us join. Please. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Um, I need to got an air bubble. It goes. <laughs> So this is the Rose Hill Mine. Here's Charles approaching the Rose Hill Mine. This is called the Rose Hill Mine. We're here at Big Stone. Going down in an old mine. So you can talk to them, tell us about it. Okay, so here we are in the crystals that are in the fracture, lining the fracture, and we see them going out of way, but they're really nicely exposed here, and they're nicely exposed here. Come closer. I thought this was the Rose Hill mine, not the Panky Dredge. Because mm -hmm. he switched it. Oh, it could have been the, the edge of it or something. I've seen some rainbow there, but I don't know if it's sticking to it. Okay, so the plan is... We got everybody standing around. Uh, the plan is going to go to... Uh, Yark's saying we're going to the Pinky Breccia. We'll go there. I'll get out snacks and waters and things like that at that spot. So we won't do it here. We'll do it where we drive to.
So this is the top of Hickstone. We believe we're standing on the Devonian. And we just saw the Hampwell. Interesting landowners here came out to see us. Have lots of stories about people drilling. Okay, we're at the site of the Hampwell at the top of Hickstone. I'm gonna go over. The oh, hemp well. Yeah, you can drop Well, assuming he hasn't filled up with stuff. Well, right. It wouldn't be that much because it's. map we were looking at last night. When I was little, I was I look pretty close to him, you see. young Indeed. No. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Bob, I thought it should have corn. <laughs> oh, she's the head cow. She's the boss cow. <laughs> I don't see any. I was looking for some kind of fresh type of rock. Everything mm -hmm. here is so uh, lichen covered. So we're on top of Hickstone in the Panky Breccia near the very top of the top part of the Hickstone. So uh, there's a couple of loose pieces around if anybody wants to take a look at them. The textures are, are very complicated. Uh, this rock is very high in chert, um, microcrystal and silica. Um, now, what's interesting though, uh, we were kind of looking at this yesterday. If you do a geochemical analysis of it, it has a very volcanic like signature. It's got these like pretty steep, uh, rare earth element patterns, especially fractionated on the heavies, which is indicating that the source of this material might have come from deep in the earth or uh, in the mantle. Um, something that's interesting is if you look here, you see a, a variety of different bedrocks. Um, I actually see a little fossil in this one. That's pretty cool. There's like a little shell in here. Um, what else was I going to say about this, Scott? This, if you remember from the cross section we were looking at down at the rose mine of this area, this is where the breccia is at the shallowest level on the dome. So it's about 150 feet below us. Uh, also in this area, I uh, showed this in one of the, the core photos yesterday. Uh, at about 500 feet, you hit this pretty thick fluorospar layer here. Um, can't remember how thick it is exactly. I want to say 50 to 100 feet or so, but it's like almost just straight blue-green fluorospar. Kind of like the stuff we saw down at the rose mine. Um, so anyway, this is a, a pretty confusing, enigmatic part of Hicks Dome that we're trying to wrap our heads around. But 
Well, Pinky Breccia, certainly part of the story of Hicks Dome. So the uh, silica is the matrix of the bre Breccia? Is what glues everything together? Yes, there is quite a bit of silica that's gluing everything together. And you do see individual uh, limestone and chert brecciated class. Okay. Could you go through a little bit of the relationship of this breccia uh, with the larger magmatic intrusive? I, we talked about it last night a little bit, but just kind of looking at it now and thinking about that storyline. Yeah, um, I think something that, that's just kind of peculiar is all these things tying together. The breccia, the really shallow nature of the, uh, the mineralized breccia underneath. Um, this being the topographic kind of high with all these beds flanking around Hicks Dome. Um, and then again, you know, they've, they've drilled holes all around the dome here. You see a lot of these igneous dikes, these volcanic sheets that are coming up, carbonatite sheets that are intruding into this mineralized breccia kind of all around us. So if Hicks Dome were a volcano, the way that I would picture this in my head is this would kind of be the intrusive center. And then you have all those cone sheets and dykes kind of radiating off of it in a you know, 360 degree fashion. Well, does um, the breccia form a liniment like some of the other fluorite things? Or do you not know? The only places that you see breccia on Hickstone, it's like this is the best outcrop of it. There's a little bit farther up over there. Um, if you remember looking at the geologic map from down the hill, there's like three spots on the dome where it really outcrops. Um, so yeah, the surface exposures of, of these rocks aren't really there. Everything is almost interpreted wow. from underground drill logs and wow. records. Huh. So, okay, what's happening, Chad? So you showed on the seismic that it looks like a flower structure. And all these things, there may be faults where intrusions get up through. But I think that it's, it's a big restraining bend and all the fluorite have the horse tails like you were showing and i think that that just oh, makes an, in a, in a the way the bend is it opens up a low pressure area for fluids to shoot up along fractures but i don't know that you have to have a mantle volcano, volcano. you just have to have a pathway up from the volcano. Okay. from the mantle. you've got a shiny like this right and then the Lust Creek Fault sort of comes in like this. And this thing sits in the middle of this flat that it's just scooped up and then fallen back down. Mm -hmm. So it's an added inversion on it. And, and then down here is the Rust Creek Graben and the Wabash Zone. And somewhere up here is Cottage Grove Fault Zone that goes sort of like this. And Hicks Dome sort of has a weird orientation. Like it's been so, rotated. <laughs> so you, yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. I like the idea of it being, uh, you know, we're releasing, restraining. Things, that makes sense to me. But, um, it's just like, where's the beef? You know, where? <laughs> well, where? where, where Yeah.